Should you buy a fellow Opus? That's what you're here to find out. Hopefully I can help you with that. Uh, first off, hi, my name is Steven. I'm a barista. That's it. I have used the fellow Opus for about 10-ish months now for both filter and espresso. Many different coffees, various origins, varietals, processes, etc. I have watched many different reviews on this grinder, YouTube videos, Instagram reels, blog posts, Reddit threads, news articles. So this review is going to be a lot less general, more focused on my own thoughts and takeaways, and things I didn't see in other reviews that might be helpful. Fellow did not send me this grinder, I bought it. However, I should say, I do own an Ode, a Staggy KG, and a number of different Carter mugs, so I do have an inherent bias. I'm going to do my best to keep this concise, but if you'd like to skip ahead at any time, I've left timestamps in the track bar below. Let's get to it. Before we start, I wanted to thank the team at Fellow Products for coming out with the Opus, uh, in particular Nick Terzulli. For those of you who don't know, he's the current Vice President of R&D over at Fellow Product helped bring the Opus into existence. He worked on the Gen 2 Brew Burrs. He's designed a number of other Fellow Products. I've seen Nick in the comments section, the forums, uh, on Reddit, on social media, he's at Expo. Nick shows up and I think that's worth a lot. So thank you, Nick. Materials. So first off, yes, the Opus is made mostly out of plastic. Now, just because something is made out of plastic does not mean it's not well built. For the most part, I do feel that the Opus is well built, but I do have one concern on the structural integrity of the grinder, which I'll touch on later. A lot of reviews talk about scratches on the base, um, and they attribute that to friction contact between the bottom of the catch cup and the top of the base. So after I read a lot of these reviews, I went and I put some felt fabric tape on the bottom of my catch cup to try and prevent that. But it turns out that coffee grounds are what scratch the base, um, not purely just the friction. So mine has scratches anyway. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested in that fabric tape, but I will say it heavily reduces the magnetization of the catch cup. Additionally, there are scratches here between the lid and the hopper, which you can see them when you remove the lid. Now, this isn't such a big deal. I will say that the uh, the tight tolerances on the lid, like that's really nice, but coffee grounds get stuck in between, and so that makes it a double-edged sword. Speaking of the hopper, uh, when it's plugged in, of course, when you remove the hopper and then you put it back on, the Opus sounds out of beep to let you know that you put the hopper back on correctly. But with mine anyway, it actually sounds out a beep before you've put it back on, which means it's possible to grind coffee while the hopper is not fully secured. And yes, I did learn that the hard way. Material picks up fingerprints and oil from your hands pretty well, so you need to make sure you're giving the Opus a wipe down pretty regularly. Now, because the Opus is mostly made out of plastic, which, if you're interested, you can see the internals in this teardown video by Emily Bryant on making the Opus stepless, uh, the plug has no ground, but I don't think it needs one because it would probably just be redundant. If you're familiar with the Ode Fellows Other Grinder, then you know all about the Ode Catch Cup. I have found that the Opus Catch is better in nearly every way. The magnet is built in instead of on the outside. The material on the inside resists the static. It has a, a built-in fin system and it's it's more streamlined and it's less aggressive than the fins uh, in the Ode Catch Cup. And most of all, the lid on the Opus Catch fits way better than the lid on the Ode. I don't have my Opus Catch lid right now uh, because I've been using the uh, Espresso dosing cup. I have found this to be really handy. It's designed for both 54 and 58 mil porta filters, uh, and I found it works well for both, but in particular, a little better for 54 just because it has more overhang filter coffee. So I would say that the Opus makes great filter coffee for a grinder that's priced at $195. Nearly every coffee I've brewed on the Opus tastes pretty solid. And I think it was Nick who posted on his Instagram a story about how anaerobic processed coffees 
do really well in the Opus, and I would totally agree. The Opus does a really good job of taking crazy, zesty, sparkly coffees and really toning them and refining them into something that retains those flavors but is super drinkable. Cups brewed on the Opus are sweet, they have fairly good acidity, uh, they have great body, uh, good mouthfeel, they're balanced, they're easy to drink. They don't have a ton of clarity or separation of flavor and there is a slight astringency towards the higher end of extractions, but it doesn't all detract from the overall taste of the brews. I'd say overall it's an excellent filter coffee grinder. Now if you're shopping for grinders, you really like fellow products, you might be deciding between the Opus and the Ode. Maybe it's the fact that one's made out of plastic, one's made out of metal, one's conical, and the other is flat. I have both grinders, and I'll say this. I have ground coffees on the Ode that taste way better on the Opus. I've tasted coffees on the Opus that taste better on the Ode. Really what it comes down to is price points and feature sets. Now we need to talk about espresso. Now I have pulled a ton of shots on the Opus. Uh, right now I'm using a Breville Bambino Plus and a Breville Dual Boiler. And I would say espresso ground on the Opus tastes pretty good. Espresso shots have medium acidity, uh, good brightness, great balance, uh, but they don't have a ton of body or mouthfeel. They're not overly sweet. However, there are three main reasons I would not recommend the Opus for espresso. The first is stack. Now, if you know what RDT is, a Ross droplet technique, uh, you might know that when grinding for espresso, uh, you may want to add uh, a drop or two or a few sprays of water to your dose before grinding, and this helps reduce static. I have found I have to spray each dose at least two times, if not more, for any meaningful negation of static. The ionizer is just not doing enough work at the finer end of the grind. Once you go past about three on the dial, does there need to be two ionizers? Does there need to be not just one ionizer here, but one closer to the burr set? Does there need to be a positive and a negative ionizer? I have no earthly idea what I'm talking about. Two, retention, and it's a lot. This is my main concern about the build of the grinder. Every time I grind coffee, in order to get all the retention out, and usually there's like a gram to two grams plus for each dose, I have to smack the crap out of the grinder uh, several times, every single time. I, I kind of make this shape with my hand to kind of like push up on the, on the barrel of the grinder as I'm smacking it down. I can feel the, the plastic buckle under the weight of each smack and that much repetitive stress cannot be good for plastic long term and so that just makes me worry about the structural integrity of the grinder. And finally, reason number three, the inner adjustment ring. If you've done any research on this grinder, you may have found that people tend to make note of um, or even complain a lot about the inner adjustment ring. So first off, just to familiarize you, if you're not, um, this set of numbers out here um, is the grind range. And it starts at one and it ends at 11. And then you have this ring right here this is the outer adjustment ring. Um, you have to open up the hopper to get to this blue ring, the inner adjustment ring, or the outer and inner ring. The outer ring adjusts the grind, uh, and each click moves the burrs 50 microns. Each move of the inner ring, and there it goes from negative six to plus six, changes the outer ring's adjustment range by 33 microns. And so if you do the math, then you can say, okay, well, this gives you a ton of granularity, um, a ton of adjustment range. I just don't know that it works. A lot of people will say it's overcomplicated and it's over-engineered. And I frankly have to agree with them because I have taken a lot of time to try and understand how this thing works in such a way that I can easily explain it to somebody else. And I can't. I have made grind adjustments that if you do the math equal each other and yet I get different results every single time. I don't know how it works. I know that it does and eventually I get to where I'm looking for as far as the dial in is concerned, but it takes a lot of trial and error, a lot of searching around and therefore a lot of wasted coffee. 
And if you're already on a budget, which is why you're only spending $195, yes, that's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money for a decent coffee grinder. Do you need to be wasting a ton of coffee every time you're dialing in? I don't think so. Additionally, I'm not so sure that everyone that's bought this grinder is getting the same experience. We have reports of people getting grinders out of the box that are set too coarse. We have reports of people getting grinders out of the box that are set too fine. Is this user error? Are these real inconsistencies? Is this a real QC issue? I don't know. Uh, then I found this video by this one guy. I'll just play a clip of it now. You think that you're done now. You think that you are set and you are finer. Well, wait a minute. Here I went finer, and yet it's gone coarser on here. And I actually usually shows up looking a little bit in between the zones. Let's move this back and forth. Hey, everything now lines up perfectly. And when I watched that video, I thought this guy had lost his damn mind. Um, but I tried it, and it works half the time. This, I don't I don't know exactly what he's doing. Is he like skipping some gears? Um, is he damaging the grinder in some way? I don't know. Like I just can't readily recommend this for espresso use because it is just overcomplicated. Somebody on Reddit uh, made an app for this called Beanie, uh, and I've been using the app. The app will help you decode some of those adjustments and help you dial in, uh, and it gives you course fine and then the unified grind size, what those two numbers should add up to. It's not perfect because when you do change the inner ring, you'll show that you're in between marks on the outer ring, and the app doesn't quite display for that. But the app does definitely help give you a general idea of where you need to be. So thank you to this user on Reddit for making the app. You who's watching this might think, why do I need an app to dial in a coffee grinder? And to that, I'll just say, there. If you're interested in the Opus and you're brewing espresso, then my recommendation to you would simply be to buy another grinder. Just buy a different grinder, don't buy this grinder. If you're buying this grinder for filter coffee, you will have a great time. You won't have to mess with the inner ring at all. The ionizer is gonna work just great. You might see online that there are a lot of comparisons made between the Barazza Encore ESP. The general consensus seems to be go with the ESP for espresso and go with the Opus for filter. You might wanna check out the Turin SD40 and SK40 grinders. Uh, here is a link to someone comparing all four of those grinders if you're interested. At the end of the day, I like the Opus a lot. I like the C640 Burly Burrs. Uh, I think Fellow did a great job with those. I love the Catch Cup. I like the design. It's brutalist for sure, um, but it's minimal and it's clean. And I think there's a great foundation here, but I think some changes need to be made before the Opus is really ready for the future. I'm glad Fellow put out a grinder capable of espresso. That was the most exciting thing that led me to purchase this grinder. I'm excited for their next moves in the realm of espresso. I see you guys. I know you're coming out with a third grinder. Right? Okay, so if uh, I was working on the Opus Gen 2, the next iteration, improvements that I would like to see made, the hopper beat going off early, I would fix that. I would make the ionizer more powerful, or I would add another ionizer. The burrs are really easy to take out, and the chamber is really easy to take apart, but then it's, it's very hard to put back together. Um, there's this like little pin bolt that can fall into the chute of the grinder, <laughs> and once it does, it's a nightmare to get it back in. Uh, the DLC burrs come with this like little special tool to help you get that bolt back in correctly, but I would like to see that tool uh, shipped with future Opus grinders, um, or at least uh, made available on the website for purchase. And then finally, uh, if I was going to change the adjustment system, I would change it to a geared adjustment system. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, ta -da! so you have the, the outer ring, okay, and we're going to keep this just as it is, appearances wise. And I would move the marks down below and then I would move the hopper up and then there'd be another ring in between them. So imagine there's a ring that looks just like this on top. It doesn't have a fin. This one still keeps the fin, but the one on top doesn't. However, it does have some texture and this top ring is gonna be able to spin 
all the way around. So it won't just stop at one to 11. And the reason for that is with a geared adjustment system, imagine each click is one tooth of the gear, okay? And then that gear moves the burrs below them. And then on top of the first gear, you have a second gear that has a higher gear ratio, has more teeth. And let's just say every three clicks, this is an arbitrary number, every three clicks of the top gear moves the lower gear one click, okay? And that's your micro. To demonstrate, let's say this is the top gear and this is the bottom gear, and so it's click, 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 click. And the lower gear is still moving when you move the, the top gear, it's just not doing full movements between each tooth, but because you still have catches in between the teeth on the top, you're still getting a, a, a stepped adjustment system with the same amount of security. I think that makes sense. That's what I would try anyway. I don't know if that would work, but that's what I would try. Do you have an Opus? What do you think? What have your experiences been thus far? Do you want an Opus? Do you still want an Opus after watching this video? Are there any questions that you had that I didn't answer? Or do you have any questions about coffee gear in general? Leave a comment below and I will try to respond to you in a timely manner. Uh, if you're subscribed to this channel, thank you so much. Uh, this year we are gonna get back to our regularly scheduled programming. This means uh, more content. I, I can't promise that the videos will be good, but I can promise that they'll exist. And I think that's important. And we're working on improvements. I got a key light, that's nice. Uh, working on getting a wireless lav mic. If you're, if you're subscribed to this channel because you like those unhinged videos that I've been putting out, well, great news, there's more to come. So I will see you in the next one. Peace.